Hello, my brothers and sisters. This is series 307. And the topic is victory over struggling in sin or struggling with sin. We have victory now. And we need to learn how to handle our struggles with sin through Jesus Christ. He is our victory. And the Holy Ghost is our teacher. So now we know that we can do it. We can do it. Not through our self-denial or self-means, but through Jesus Christ. Through the Holy Spirit that has the power to do the work. This is why we can do the work through him because he has the power now. God has given him that power. He has given him that authority. God is just sitting back watching his son do the work. And we thank God for that. We thank God for everything that he has done through his son just for our sake, because of his love. Because he wants us to be mature in him. He wants it so bad. And God is willing to be patient with us until it is accomplished. And it will be accomplished. His work will not go back to him void. It will be accomplished. So, this is coming out of Romans chapter 7, verse 25, which is the last verse of chapter 7. And then we'll go into chapter 8. So, it says, Romans chapter 7, verse 25. Thank God. This is Paul saying, thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law. But because my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. He said, glory be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Now we have a chance. The only chance. There's going to be three, uh, three uh, cross-reference scriptures. Mark 8, 33 through 38. Colossians 3, 1 through 15. Uh, Matthew 26, 36 through 41. And those are the three uh, cross-reference scriptures that I'm going to use. There's so many more scriptures that we can use, but I'm just going to give you those. God has given me these ones to give you so that it will make you think. It will make, make you come to realize, oh, now I see. Your spiritual sight will come on. And those blinders that you used to have, God is going to take those away and give you what you need so that you can see what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Uh, and here's the first one here. It says, uh, Mark 8, 33 to 38, it says, it says, Jesus predicts his death. This is Jesus now. He predicts his death. And this is where the victory comes from. Is in the death of Jesus Christ. The death, the victory is in the death of Jesus Christ for him as well as for us. I'm almost afraid to say that I'm glad Jesus died. But I'm glad he died because otherwise we would not have a chance. Okay, Mark 8, 33 and 38. Number 33, 33 says, Jesus turned, turned around and looked at his disciples. Then reminded Peter, get away from me, Satan. He said, this is where Peter um, tried to rebuke Jesus from going to Jerusalem to do what he had to do. So Jesus rebukes him. Get away from me, Satan. Um, you are seeing things merely from a human point of view. 
not from God's point of view. This is a struggle that we face each and every day. We struggle to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us and guide us. And we see it from the Holy Spirit's point of view and not from the human point of view because the struggle in us says we got to listen to our human side rather than the spiritual side of, of Christ. That's where, that's where our struggle is. But thank God be to Christ. We do have a God-given answer through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Uh, number two says, then calling to the crowd, and he called to the crowd to join his disciples, he said, if any of you wants to want to be my followers, you must give up your own ways. You see? You got to give up your own ways. You cannot live with your own ways in Jesus Christ. Take up your cross and follow me. Take up your cross. Take up everything that you know about God and follow him in every way. Obedience in every way. Follow him. Through crowds and tribulations, through sufferings of the gospel. People are going to talk about you like they did David, like they did Paul, like they did Peter. They're going to talk about you. They're going to try to kill you. They're going to try to crucify you. But no matter what, pick up your cross. It's not an easy cross, I'm going to tell you. It's a hard cross. Remember what uh, Matthew 7 and 13 and 14 says? Narrow is the gate, but broad is the way. Many go the broad way and are destroyed. You can go the easy way, okay? It, 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 but you're going to be destroyed. But number 14 says, narrow is the gate, but hard is the way. And many and only a few go that way and are saved. Only a few go that way. You see what I'm saying? So go the hard way. Don't go the broad way. All right? Go the hard way. It's hard, y'all. It's hard. Don't, don't let nobody think you is. It's not just an easy life out there serving Christ. But the, but the struggle is worth it. It's worth it. Just like when we play sports, it was worth it to go through practice before we played any game to go through practice and get what we needed so that we could be strong in the game. And this is why you got to get what you need in Jesus Christ, which is the word of God, the word of spirit and truth through the Holy Spirit. And that way, when the wartime comes, you can fight, you can fight Satan with the word of God. Number 35, if you try to bring on uh, to your life, if you, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake mm, 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 and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. This is what the seven disciples didn't realize. They, they wanted Jesus. But they didn't want his hardship. They didn't want to go through what Jesus went through just to be Jesus. They didn't want to do that. But those 12, they remained right there. And Jesus said to the 12, after the 70 left, he said, are you going to leave me now? Are you going to leave me too? And they said, oh no, we're sticking with you, Jesus. This is what we got to do. We got, I don't care how many people is on the team. We have to stick with Jesus, no matter what. Because he's our coach. And he's the only true coach that can coach us to eternal life. Number, uh, what was that? Number 36 says, And what do, you be, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? What do you gain? Nothing. You go straight to hell. This is what Jesus is trying to say. This is why he tried to tell the rich man. When the rich man said, what must I do to inherit the kingdom, kingdom of God? He, Jesus told him, go sell all you have, come back and follow me. And, and give the rest to the poor. He said, come back and follow me. But no, that was not it. He didn't want to hear that. I ain't I, all that my father worked for. No, I can't do that. So he left. He left. And so Jesus is telling us now, we must give up our life. Just like he gave up his life for us. We got to do the same thing for the gospel's sake. Uh, number 37 says, I, no, 
Is anything worth more than your soul? Is anything? Especially when God is when when Christ is leading your soul? No, nah, ain't nothing worth it. 38 says, if anyone is ashamed of me and my message in this in this uh in this adulterous and sinful day, if anyone is ashamed of me in this adulterous and sinful day, the Son of Man will be ashamed of the person when he returns in the glory of the Father, woo, which he, which is with his holy angel. When he returns, oh, you're gonna be ashamed of me? Oh, no, 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 no. No, you gotta be willing to die for me. This is what Jesus is saying in this message. If you're not willing to die for the Father, then you ain't doing nothing. You ain't doing nothing. When hard times hit, and people really started going at you, going against you like they did Paul and Peter and them, the rest of the disciples, are you still going to stay in? Huh? You won't know Christ unless your faith is really tested. Like Job, his faith was tested by God. David, his, his faith was tested by God. Solomon's faith was tested by God. Abraham, faith was tested by God. You don't know him until you're tested. We didn't, when, we, when I played basketball, we didn't know that team until we tested. We didn't know the power and strength of our um, group, our team. We didn't know it until we was tested by the, by the, the opponent, opposing team. And after we played them, we won, now we knew who we were in that in in, in 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 our high school or college team now we know well now we understood who we were we were the warriors we were the blue devils and everybody knew it they had man they had a war when they came against us same thing here we got to know who we are in jesus christ uh, now we'll go to the next one. This is in Colossians 3, 1 through, 15, 1 through 15. And it says, living the new life. Then we got a brand new life to live. Thank God. Glory be to God. Um, Colossians 3, 1 through 15. Number one says, since you have been raised to the new life of, with Christ, you, your sights, no, I'm sorry, set your sights on the Realize realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. He said, this is what you have to do. Okay, you're going through your struggles. You understand it more now. Paul understands it more now. Um, he, said, he said, thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thank God. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to it. Sin. I'm a slave to it. But glory be to God. Now, God has given us the answer now. We can be happy. We can be joyful. Where Christ is sitting in the place of honor at the right hand of God. Number two says, think about these things in the, of heaven, not the things of the earth. He gave us a clue. Don't think about these things on earth anymore. Think about the things of heaven. All that he has taught you. What he has taught you about the promises that he has given us from his father in heaven. Put our sights on heavenly things, not on earth. It was never intended for us to really put our sights on earthly things. It was always intended for us to put on our sights on heavenly things. Number three says, for you died to your to your life, to this life. And your real life is hidden with Christ in, G in God. Now you got your real life, your new life. It's hidden. It's hidden with Christ in God. And the only way you can get there, through the Holy Ghost. It teaches you all things. You got to trust and believe in the Holy Ghost. Number four says, and when Christ, who is your life? Who is your life 
is revealed to the world, is revealed to the whole world. You will share in all his glory. Number five says, so put death, put to death the sinful earth, the things lurking within you. He, he's a put to death there. Now you got the power to do it. Put those things to death. Don't think about them. No, don't even want to do them no more. Give all your desires to God now. All those sinful desires, give them to him. Give them to Christ. And he will give you new desires. So you won't want to do those desires no more. Because that's what he did for me. There's still some things in me he still needs to take out. And he's slowly doing them too. Because I believe. I got faith in it. I trust him to do it. I gave it to him because I couldn't do it no more. I couldn't do it. I just can't do it. Only one can do it is Christ Jesus. So all my trust and faith is in him now. And um, having nothing to do with sinful immort immortality, impurity, lust, and evil desires, don't, don't grieve. No, 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 no. Don't be greedy. For a greedy person is an idolater. Worship the things of this world. We worship the things of this world. Don't do that. Just give them to God. Number six says, because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. He says, the anger of God is coming now if you keep on doing these things. Remember, Paul said, shall we keep on sinning? God uh, God forbid. The only thing you're going to do is make God angry. You know? So don't do it. Number seven says, you used to do these things when your life was still part of the world. We are new creatures now. Guess what we do? Number eight says, but now is the time is the time to get rid of anger, get rid of rage, get rid of malice, get rid of behaviors. I mean, I'm sorry, get rid of malice, behaviors, slander, or dirty language. Get rid of all that. You don't need them no more. Don't lie to each other. For you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wickedness deeds. All of its wicked deeds. We have stripped them off. And then it said, number 10 said, put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to as you learn as you learn to know your creator and become like him. Number 11 says, in this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or Greek. I mean, a Jew or a Gentile. Circumcised or uncircumcised. Barbarian or uncivilized. Slave or free. It does not matter. Christ is all that matters. Christ is all that matters. And, his, and he lives in all of us. This is what we got to understand. Christ is all, he's he, he, he everything to us. He lives in all of us. Number 12 says, since God chose you to be the holy people of love, the holy people he loves, I'm sorry. God chose us because we're the holy people that he loves. You must, you must clothe yourselves with tenderheartedness, mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. These are the things that we must clothe ourselves. This is the material stage that we have to reach. So we gotta, we gotta let those things go because they did, but take on Christ so he can deliver these things to us and make us new. Number 13 says, make allowance for each other's faults. Don't be hard on one another. Make allowance. I love you. So I, I, it don't matter. I don't see no fault because the only thing I, that's how God does. God sees us out of his eyes of love. He don't see no faults in us. Only thing he sees is love for his children. Uh, what was I? Uh, make allowance for our fault. And forgive anyone who, defend, who, who defends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. That's hard to do. That's a struggle, ain't it? I know it is. Because I used to be the same way. But no, I'd rather forgive now. 
Because the thing is with me, I don't want to be separated from God. I don't want to be out of his presence, not for one moment. I'm fearful of that. I want to be in his presence all the time. About, uh, uh, number 14 says, above all, clothe yourself with love. Number one thing, clothe yourself. Above all, clothe yourself with love. Which, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. I preached a sermon one time about the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is our glue. It's our super glue to keep us together. And it's showing that it is love that bonds us together and keep us all as one. That's why the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost are one because they're bonded together with love. Number 15 says, and let the peace of, let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. If you got peace, you can let, you can let Christ rule because he gave you the first peace you had. He gave you the second, the 10th, the 12th, the 14th, so why not keep trusting him? That's all he's going to give you, peace. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. And always be thankful, he says. Always be thankful, you guys. And so now we're coming with the last uh, cross reference scripture, which is Matthew 26, 36 through 41. And it says here, Jesus prays in, ooh, this is the one I love the most. Jesus plays in, prays in Gethsemane. I love this part, man. I love this. This shows us that uh, Jesus really was human too. And even though he lives in our body, we're still human. We're going to do some things that we don't supposed to do. But God is such a loving and forgiving God. This is what you got to remember. Number 36, Matthew 26, 36 and 41. 26 says, Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And he said, Sit here while I go over there to pray. And he went in with um, Peter. Uh, I started to say Paul, but it won't Paul. Peter, John, and James. Those are the main three he went and prayed with. Um, number 36 said, 37 says, He took Peter and the Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguish and distressed. He was in a struggle, you guys. Just like we be in our struggle, just like David was in his struggle, we be in that struggle as well. Number 38 said, he told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He said, I'm crushed, you guys. My soul, my whole inner being, my whole life is crushed. It's all messed up right now because he's human. And he lets you know you're human. You're going through these struggles. It's okay. But it's to make you and make make you to grow you into a mature person of Christ. And 39 says, he went on a little further and, be, and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, My father, if it if it is possible, let this cup of suffering, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet what your will to be done. Not my will. Not my not my will, Lord, but your will be done. That's what he's trying to tell us. It's not about us. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about the Father. His will being being carried out. God already done planned all this. We just gotta carry it out. It's our will within Jesus Christ to do this. Not our own will anymore. Number four says, number 40 says, Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? And then number, it's a struggle to stay asleep. I've been there. I remember when they used to teach me in church here in, in, in Outwater, California. 
my pastor taught us we had to go to church at 12 o'clock at night and we would, we would pray all until 6 o'clock that morning. And there were some of us that went to sleep. Me, I went to sleep too now. I ain't gonna lie. To pray from 12 to 6, oh my goodness. That really, really taught me what this scripture really, really means. And then in number 41 says, keep watch and pray so that you will not give into temptation. I gave into temptation, I fell asleep. Just like Peter, I fell asleep. And then it says, for the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. The soul flesh is weak, y'all. You might as well have to admit it's weak. Your spirit is strong to do what's right. But your body says, oh no, we're gonna do what's wrong, Jack. Uh so that is the that is it. And now we're gonna go into the conclusion of the scriptures. And um it says uh, here. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then it says, Deliver deliverance will come through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the moment we accept, now no, the moment we exit from the moment we exit these present, uh, present bodies through which our sinful nature operates ineffectively, in it in so if so effectively, this struggle will go on until then. And Paul summarizes it for us in Romans chapter 20, I mean verse 25. Romans chapter 7 verse 25, he summarized it. So then, with the mind, I'm, mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. He wants to, he wants to remain he wants to remind us that the struggle is struggle is there. But praise God, he has made a provision by which our by which our uh, fleshly nature may be progressively uh, subdued. Uh, right here and now in this life and by which we may continue to grow in holiness. No, we're not going to be totally rid of it in this life, but we can grow. We can make progress. Stay true for, we can make progress. Okay, but what I want you to see here in the in, in, in that Paul has come to the end of himself and that's what we need to do. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Paul body through which his sinful nature operate, which leads to death. And Paul realized that he is, you know, that, that in his own strength, he is helpless and hopeless and that is uh absolutely essential in order to grow in christ you have to realize you got to realize that you're helpless and you're hopeless because that's the only way you can grow in christ we are not going to be begin to please god until we come to the place where we are willing to say yes lord i agree with you there isn't anything in me to commend myself to, to you. Um, I have no strength to please you in, in of myself. I need your power and your strength operating through me. That there is, that, that, that where it has to begin. That is where it has to begin. You got to realize it. That you can't do it. And you have to give in and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I agree with you. I can't do it. But I know you can. This is what it's all about, my people. This is the victory that we have in this struggle of sin. So cling to these words 
of God. Research and study it so that God can give you the true understanding through spirit and truth. For God be praised. He's the only one that's worthy to be praised. God bless you. God loves you. I love you. Thank you until we go into chapter 8 and get the total victory of chapter 6 and chapter 7. God bless you, my people.